The Three Strategies of Huang Shigong Regarding the methods of the leading general, he engages with and grasps the mind of the hero, rewards and favors the deserving, and communicates his will to the masses. For this reason, if he keeps the same likes as the masses, there is nothing he cannot achieve. If he holds the same dislikes as the masses, there is nothing he cannot overcome. Governing the state and keeping one's family safe are a question of gaining the people's trust. Whereas losing the state and destroying the family are questions of losing the people, all life forms wish to achieve their will. According to the military pronouncements, the supple can control the rigid, while the weak can control the strong. Suppleness is virtue. Rigidity is villainy. The people will provide aid to the weak, while they will resent the strong. Suppleness has its time to be used. Rigidity has its time to be implemented. Weakness has its time to be deployed and strength has its time to be increased. Use all four together and control their interactions. When the beginning and the end cannot be seen, no one person can truly know them. The enlightened spirits of heaven and earth change and shift in accordance with all things. Change your movements and be inconsistent. Rotate and transform in response to the enemy. Do not conduct affairs first, instead, allow the enemy to move, and then react. Thus one can create plans that are limitless in what they can control. This is done by simply propping up and sustaining the authority of heaven. This brings peace and justice to the eight extremities, and contains and gives order to the nine barbarians. Those who plan in this way, can become teacher to emperors or great lords. For this reason, it is said, there is no body who does not covet strength, but many cannot maintain what is subtle. If one can preserve what is subtle, then he can protect his life. The sage preserves it in order to respond to all possibilities. If they fold it, subtlety will permeate the four seas. If they roll it up, subtlety will not even fill a cup. If they dwell in it, it cannot be used as a home. If they guard it, it cannot be used as city walls. They store it deep in their hearts, and the enemy states must surely submit. The military pronouncements say, when capable of both subtlety and rigidity, one state will shine with glory. When capable of both weakness and strength, one state will be outstanding. When purely subtle and purely weak, one state will surely be pared away. When purely rigid and purely strong, one state will certainly perish. Regarding the Tao of governing the state, you must rely on both the nobility and the people. If trust and virtue are like the stomach and the heart, and the people like limbs, then one's policies will have no obstacles. If one's objectives are like the limbs and body, as the bones and joints follow each other, then this is the natural way of heaven, and its skill is unbroken. The core of the military and the state lies in observing the hearts of the masses and carrying out the 100 services of government. Those who are threatened must be kept safe. Those who are fearful must be made happy. Those who rebel must be brought back. Those who have grievances must be indulged. Those who have cases lodged against them must be investigated. Those of inferior rank must be valued. Those who are strong must be restrained. Those who are enemies must be attacked. Those who are greedy must be enriched. Those with desires must be employed. Those who are fearful must be hidden away. Those who devise plans must be kept close. Those who make slanderous remarks must be overturned. 
Those who are scornful must be responded to. Those who turn against you must be got rid of. Those who act favorably must be subdued. Those who are full of themselves must be kept in check. Those who return home to the state must be summoned. Those who submit must be allowed to live. Those who surrender must be released. If you obtain a strategic position, defend it. If you are in a narrow pass, block it. If you face difficult terrain, then establish a military post. If you seize a city, divide it up. If you seize a territory, split it apart. If you seize materials, disperse them. If the enemy moves, spy on them. If the enemy is close, prepare for them. If the enemy is strong, be deferential to make them arrogant. If the enemy is in seclusion, leave them. If the enemy crosses boundaries through insults and taunting, wait for them. If the enemy is violent, calm them. If the enemy is unreasonable, treat them with righteousness. If the enemy is harmonious, then lead them by the hand to your side. Act in accordance with the enemy's movements in order to subdue them. Follow their trends in order to break them. Be wild with your words in order for them to make mistakes. Surround them with your net in order to catch them. When you gain something, do not keep it. When you occupy somewhere, do not set up long-term defense. When you seize a city, do not stay too long. When you establish a new ruler, do not take anything away. Though it is you who performs the actions, it is your officers who gain from it. Through your actions, they know where their advantage lies. While they act as dukes, it is you who acts as the son of heaven. Render the city able to defend itself and command your officers to position themselves. Previous generations were able to respect their ancestors, but few were able to treat their subordinates respectfully. To respect the ancestors is to show intimacy. To treat subordinates appropriately is to act as a ruler. Those who treat their subordinates appropriately attend to agriculture and sericulture, making sure to not disturb the people during the vital seasons. This means keeping taxes and restraint to a minimum so that they are not lacking in goods. Keep your labor demands limited, then the state will be rich and families will be happy. Only then should you select officers to direct and look after the people. Those known as the officers are paladin. For this reason, it is said that if you assemble your paladin, then the enemy state will come to an end. Heroes are the trunks of the state, while the common people are the roots. If you obtain the trunks and gather the roots, then the government will not be resented. The essence of employing the troops lies in honoring ritual and giving out heavy salaries. If you esteem ritual, then knowledgeable officers will come to your service. If you give out heavy salaries, then the officers will approach death with light hearts. This is why when giving salaries to the worthy, do not covet the goods that are handed out. When rewarding success, do not take too much time. In this way, the strength of subordinates will come together while the enemy state is paired away. As for the Tao of employing troops, if you use respect to hand out titles and utilize keen observation when handing out goods, officers will approach you of their own free will. If you connect with them through ritual and encourage them through righteousness, then officers will be willing to die for the state.